the Matt Gates nomination is finally dead. And oddly, no one seems to be mourning that. But the most dangerous part of Trump's Project 2025 plan is not. Weaponizing the DOJ, the FBI, and the military so that a totalitarian state can be solidly put into place. Trump's plan to weaponize the FBI is the most dangerous because it shows that while Trump acts with impulsiveness, self-centered narcissism, and dim-wittedness, there are people behind him who know how to play chess. Yeah, they're called Russians, by the way. And they are learning both from the Gates catastrophe and from the current uproar caused by not vetting accused rapist Pete Hegseth as Secretary of Defense. Andrew McCabe, former deputy director of the FBI, spoke on CNN about the incredibly dangerous plan Team Trump is cooking up for weaponizing the FBI by putting Cash Patel, a right-wing ideologue, in a top position that does not require congressional approval. I'm going to show that video in just a second, but first, it's worth looking at the way in which Trump and his extreme right-wing zealots are showing, just like they did in 2016, how much of the government is run, by lack of a better term, on gentlemen's agreements, not the law of the land. Trump is already out there floating the idea that his cabinet nominations do not have to be vetted by the FBI, and he's correct. An even more important example is the appointment of FBI director. The law stipulates that the FBI director shall be appointed to a 10-year term. The length of that term is designed to insulate the director against political interference on the part of the White House. And yet, the president has the power to dismiss the FBI director without cause. So Trump, naturally, is going to fire the current FBI director so that he can appoint his own yes-man. The goal here is dismantling the government and weaponizing the part that is left over. The DOJ and the military are, at this stage of Project 2025, the two most important areas to be weaponized. The purpose of the Gates nomination was to hire someone who would willingly and gladly tear down the Department of Justice and mobilize the rest to go after political enemies and resistors. Gates fell apart because of his illegal activities and for elbowing Republican senators in the eye when he was trying to gain more power in the House. But in some ways, it doesn't matter. What Team Trump has learned from all this controversy is to nominate qualified people at the top and put in unqualified hatchet men at the level of deputy, positions which do not have to be confirmed by the Senate, but have the most power in running day-to-day operations anyway. That is exactly what Team Trump plans to do with the FBI by nominating Michigan Representative and former Special Agent Mike Rogers to be the next FBI director, and then installing right-wing lunatic Cash Patel as deputy director. Listen as Andrew McCabe describes this. And he's been encouraged by a lot of people on the right to to put Cash Patel in. Uh, What would a combination of that look like, do you think? So in my estimation, Caitlin, uh, no part of the FBI's mission is safe with Cash Patel in any position of leadership in the FBI, and certainly not in the deputy director's job. So just as as an example, the deputy director's job in the FBI is is unique because, of course, the director is a political appointee and the and the deputy director is typically a senior FBI agent. Somebody spent their entire career learning about the FBI, understanding its people and doing its work. So the deputy director actually runs the FBI on a day to day basis. You're essentially the chief operating officer. Now, as McCabe makes clear, the only point of having someone as rid- ridiculously unqualified as Cash Patel run the Bureau itself is to be able to put in a pit bull that will destroy the agency of its independence and mold it into a weapon loyal to the current administration. And look, the FBI is not exactly known for being an agency filled with liberal peace activists and college professors to begin with. But there is a lesson from college professors that honest FBI agents facing a purge could learn and emulate. 
as Mad Dog Patel starts ordering field offices and agents to start investigating political opponents and resistance groups in general, he's expecting people to refuse as a means of firing them. And yes, it's a great litmus test. Basically, it's going like this. Are you willing to stand on principle? Yes? Good. Then you're fired. So here's my advice to FBI agents. Don't refuse. Accept the assignment, drag your feet on it, and give terribly inaccurate and vague reports that are not of much use. In other words, committee the process to death. College professors are no good at standing up to college presidents, but they are experts in death by committee to stifle all initiatives, good or bad. And this is going to have to be one of the first methods of resistance for all government agencies and individual employees. Comply and then drag your feet. Wait things out. Quitting on principle only speeds up the process. Slow it down. Make it grind to a halt and wait for the cavalry to arrive. I'm Anthony Vincent Gallo for Occupy Democrats.